us to do. And it start out by living holy, living right for God. If you get, if you got holy to the Holy Ghost on the inside, it's not hard to do the thing that you ought to do. But if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you are just like a bull, somebody trying to lead to the water pump, and they don't want to go. Help us today. Oh, help us. So, you got to do that assignment. So Jesus said, I have done my assignment. I have done what you wanted me to do. Now, the second thing is that we must display the character of God and his integrity. See, when we become the children of God, he places his name on us. Oh, help us today. It is not about your name, but it's about the name of Christ. See, some of us is in the church. We got the name as being a church mother. We got the name of being a deacon. We got the name of being a minister. But do we represent the character of God? Is our walk is walking with Christ, living so the world can see Him. Oh, help us today. Paul said, and no more I, but it's a Christ that dwells in me. If you still in yourself, you can't be led. You can't be taught. You can't be shown the way to God. But if you've been born again, you can be taught the thing that you need to do. Uh, hallelujah. So listen, uh, the, the integrity of God, the integrity of God, is that we're going to live holy no matter what if my friend don't want to do right I'm going to do right I am not going to get with the crowd I am not going to put down my pastor I am not going to talk about my pastor I will not talk about my sisters and brothers but I I'm going to stand up for God. I'm going to let the world know that I've been changed. Oh, help us. Oh. Uh, see, if we had the character and the integrity of God, we could be better saints. We could help the pastor. Do his job. His job is to preach the gospel. Yes. Oh Lord. And he can't hardly preach to the world for trying to keep you straight. He can't hardly preach to the own church because you has got the big old spirit. You don't want to follow. Come together, but God, He's gonna 
separate. You're going to put the goats on the left, the sheep on the right. Wow. If you've been fooling folks, they're going to find out that you are a goat. But you might as well get right now. Because after a while, God is going to show up everything. Wow. Hallelujah. So, when we have the character of God, we learn how to handle folks. We learn how to treat folks right. And when people see us, they'll know that we are holy. You don't have to tell nobody. You say, you better respect me. I'm saved. No, you, your life ought to make them respect you. Sometimes I can be walking down the street, going to church. Sometimes I walk to church. I can be walking down the street to the church, and people see me come and they put the liquor behind me back. Say, how you doing, Reverend? I say, I'm doing fine. I didn't have to tell them to get that look out of my face. But see, they know that I live a sanctified life. I live a holy life. I'm not mean to nobody. But I will tell you the truth. Sometimes church folks who the meanest thing in the world.
Hallelujah. Minister Dennis, I don't care if it was a hooker walk down the street trying to tempt you. You will let them know that God want to save you. You don't have to lie to nobody. Listen, I, I thank God for the gift that he gave me 37 years ago. He gave me this precious gift. And I'm so glad that God gave me a gift that loves me for 37 years. And it seems like it's getting sweeter and sweeter. Hallelujah. Wow. Uh, I know. I done picked up about a hundred pounds. But she loved every hundred pounds of it. Oh, y'all don't hear me? I ain't said nothing about her. I love her just like I did 37 years ago. I would say something about her. I know I'll catch it on the way home from the way home. say nothing, so I guess y'all been getting it to me. <laughs> but see, I got to be mindful how I handle the gift that God has given me. I got to love this. I got to treat it right. I got to give her all my heart. Oh, help me. Ain't all the women got in the room. And you can't get none of my money because she gets it all. Can't get none of my time because she gets that too. Because we ride down the road like old folks. <laughs> Y'all go hear me. I'm a young man. She tell me I'm getting, I'm older than I think, but I'm young. Fellow so Johnson, I'm young. You old. <laughs> you said it about me. But I'm young. But listen. Dr. Johnson, you better a lot of y'all. Yes, Seventy something years old, walk two miles a day, did the exercise. Eighty. Oh, no mercy. Eighty four. Eighty four. See, I'm gonna keep holding what I thought. <laughs> but listen, but he's in good shape. And so, but the thing about it, you got to be mindful. God has given some of you gifts, and you don't use it right. So folks got the gift to sing and act like they can't sing. They got the gift to help the pastor do things. But they sit down and being hateful and evil and not doing what they ought to do. Listen, God will take that gift and give it to somebody who's going to use it right. Never seen the day folks can sing and won't sing. Won't folk to beg them to sing. I ain't going to beg nobody to sing. I'll sing by myself. You don't want to sing, I ain't going to beg you. Oh, no. Look, I ain't going to make no habit going by trying to encourage choir members to come to church and sing. 
Yes. If they don't sing, I sing. If I don't have no music, I'll play music. It might not sound good, but I'll play it anyhow. I'll play myself happy if y'all don't get that thing. Y'all don't get that But see, what you do for God yeah. ought to be better than anything else you do. You ought to give God your best. You ought to use that gift that God gave you. If you can't do nothing but go to Bible study, be there on time. If you can't do nothing but testify, testify to the goodness of God. If you can't do nothing but encourage somebody, encourage somebody. Uh, and the last thing, oh, look, look at that, look at that six verse. That six verse said, I have manifested thy name unto the means which thou gavest me out of the world thine they were and thou gave them me and they have kept thy word now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee for I have given unto them the words yes. which thou gavest me, yes. and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. Yes. I pray for them. I pray not the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are Nah. Yes. See, Jesus was thanking God for giving him these disciples. And he was getting ready to go to the cross. He said, but I'm praying for them. Yeah. I'm giving them back to you. See, when God do something for us, we need to, to deposit our life in his hand. When you have that gift, First of all, we got to look at this to glorify God. First, we need to do our assignment. Yes, sir. We must display the character and integrity of God. Yes, sir. And then we must dedicate our gift to God. Yes, sir. And then lastly, in order for this to work, we need to deposit our life in His hand. Because oh, yes. when you in your hand, it is a mess. You're not going to make it. There was a young boy that had a little parakeet. He, he loved that parakeet. He'd get up in the morning, feed that parakeet. Tell him, I love you. I'm so glad to see you. Come home from school, feed that parakeet. He went on vacation to Grandma's house. We're going about a couple of weeks. He came back. First thing he did, run up the stairs to the parakeet. Took him out of the cave. Put him in his hand and squared him and said, I love you, I miss you, I love you, I miss you. He squared him. I love you, I miss you. Kept on squeezing him. Kept on squeezing him to guess what? He killed him. See, when something is in your hand, if you don't deposit it in God, you're going to kill it. If you don't use your gift, you're going to kill it. So we got to deposit what God has given us back into his hand and let him keep us because when it's in God's hand, it means something. Ah, look at this. When we think about our hand, our hand can't do very much. When I look at a, a piece of sculpture, to me, in my hand, it's just a pile of rock and dust. But, but when we look at it, when it's in, uh, you know, in a sculpture hand, it's a masterpiece. When I look at the saxophone in my hand, it just make noise. But in, in, in Mark Johnson's hand, it's the sweetest sound you want to hear. When you take and put a peanut in my hand, it's just a snack. But when you put it in Mr. Carver's hand, it's peanut butter and shoe polish. If you look at it, you take a tennis rack. In my hand, I might not just get it over the net, but in Venus Williams' hand, she is the Wimbledon champion. When you take a basketball, in my hand, it's worth $29.95, but in Kobe's hand, it's worth 52 points with the Swiss behind. When I think about, when we look at things in God's hand, 
It makes a difference in the world. A rod in my hand is a good stick to beat the dogs off. But the rod in Moses' hand, he parted the Red Sea and the children of the river cross on dry land. Hallelujah. Can I hear somebody say yeah?